Right. Okay. So um, this is kind of a, a a little bit off of the um, off of the the path that we're going today. Uh, but I want to say a bit about um, approaches to spectra using infinity categories. Um, and uh, so what I think I'm going to do is give you a bit of a tour of some things that are in uh, chapter one of higher topos theory and chapter one of higher algebra. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. I can't really talk about it all today, but um, maybe it'll be a, an invitation to, to learn some of these things more carefully on your own. So, um, so first let me say uh, what the point of talking about infinity categories is. So one of the things that we've talked about is if you have a simplicial model category M, then you can construct its homotopy category um, by passing to the subcategory of cofiber and fibrin objects and then quotienting by the homotopy relation. Um, but if M is a simplicial model category, uh, I guess we've mostly been talking about topological model categories, but it's basically the same, the same story um, either way. Uh, So if M is enriched as a model category over simplicial sets or topological spaces, um, then there's, there's some more structure here, uh, which is that there's a mapping space um, between two objects, which is a space, a simplicial set or space. And if X and Y are both cofibrin and fibrin, then this is actually cofibrin and fibrin as well. So it's either a consimplicial set or, um, or a cell complex in spaces. Uh, and um, so, so in some sense, we can think of this homotopy category as, as being enriched over spaces. And that's not really quite right because if we change these objects uh, up to weak equivalence in our model category, then, um, then this space might change. Uh, but in fact, it'll change just up to homotopy equivalence. So, um, so we can think of the homotopy category of M as enriched over the homotopy category of spaces. Okay, here and here, here spaces can mean topological spaces or it can mean simplicial sets um, it, since they have the same homotopy category. So uh, what does this actually mean though? It's a little bit weird because um, generally when we talk about enriched categories, we wanna think about the, uh, the, the mapping spaces that, that live in the category that's doing the enriching as somehow um, lifting the sets of maps just in the regular category, ho m. And, um, and uh, the problem with, with objects in the homotopy category of spaces is they don't have underlying sets. So, um, going between some description of a diagram in the homotopy category in terms of specific maps and some description of it in terms of this enrichment by homotopy types is a little bit weird. Um, so there are a few approaches to making this idea a little bit more precise. Uh, and I'll talk about two of these approaches. So the first approach is to work directly with simplicial or topological categories. So, um, so in other words, even if you forget about the model category structure on M, it still has this simplicial structure and also the subcategory of cofiber and fibrin objects um, also has an enrichment over simplicial spaces or over, over topological spaces. Um, and so in these categories, uh, there's, um, well, so the, the idea is that we can think of a, a category enriched in homotopy types
as a homotopy type in some category, um, maybe in some model category of simplicially enriched or topologically enriched categories. Um, I'll write. I'll write these like this. Okay, something kind of annoying here is if you write S cat, um, that could mean either categories enriched over simplicial sets or simplicial objects in, in categories, and those are not the same thing. So, um, so this was made precise by, by uh, Bergner, who constructed a model structure on um, simplicially enriched categories which, which exactly captures this idea. So she proved that there's a model structure um, on simplicially enriched categories with, with the following properties. Uh, So a weak equivalence between two of these categories is a functor f that um, that induces a uh, an equivalence on all mapping spaces. So I have these maps of simplicial sets, and this this is supposed to be a a weak equivalence of simplicial sets. And F also induces an equivalence on the um, on the uh, on the homotopy categories of these two categories. Okay, so what I mean here is um, you take your categories which are enriched in simplicial sets and you apply pi zero to all the simplicial sets, and this gives you some one categories. Um, likewise, uh, to define a vibration, so this should induce a vibration on all the mapping spaces. And it should be an isovibration, um, which means that it satisfies a certain lifting property for, um, for equivalences. So um, if I have some x in C and a map uh, from f of x to um, some object y in D, and this map is an equivalence in the simplicial category D, um, then this lifts to an equivalent starting at x. Okay, and then once we've defined the weak equivalences and the vibrations, the, the co-fibrations are determined from that. Um, and there's a similar idea for this for topological categories, except that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's exactly the same idea, I should say. Um, so uh, uh, one thing that we should notice about this definition is the fibrant objects in this model structure. So those are the, the simplicial categories that are fibrant over a point. Um, uh, this condition is trivial, and this condition says that each of the um, each of the mapping spaces are fibrant simplicial sets. So C is a fibrant simplicial category if and only if it's enriched over um, fibrant simplicial sets, which are also known as con complexes. Um, and by the way, if we go back to a second ago when we were talking about um, simplicially enriched model categories, uh, well, one of the consequences of this axiom defining a, a simplicially enriched model category is that the mapping space between two co-fibrant fibrant objects is always a con-complex, okay? Um, 
So, uh, so this construction produces examples of fibered objects in this in this model category. Um, Question? Yeah. Um, what you wrote there that F has to induce an equivalence on the mapping spaces mm -hmm. and that under it, it has to be an equivalence of one categories. Doesn't mm -hmm. the first thing imply the second thing? I mean, um, no, it doesn't. So for example, um, if you have objects in D, which are not in the essential image of F, then it's possible for the first condition to be true, but, but the second condition not to be true. So this is, a, this is a condition on all X and Y and C, but it doesn't say anything about all objects in D, for example. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, thanks. Cool. Um, okay, so this is, um, so, so the, the idea then is that we should think of this model category as, um, as the model category of infinity categories. And uh, if we want to, um, uh, yeah, so um, uh, we can think of an infinity category, in other words, as a homotopy type in this model category. Um, and this, this works out for some things. One of the major drawbacks that it has is that it's very easy in this setting to talk about, um, to talk about commutative diagrams. Uh, so um, we can write down a diagram of uh, uh, inside some simplicially enriched category that, that uh, commutes on the nose. Um, but it's a little bit harder to talk about homotopy coherent diagrams. Um, and one of the things that we're sort of learning is that uh, in some cases, it's it's better to talk about homotopy coherent diagrams than it is to talk about strictly commutative diagrams. Um, so, so the drawback here is that it's easier to to talk about uh, commutative diagrams in one of these categories than to talk about uh, to talk about um, coherent ones. And we've, we've actually seen a few examples already of why we would care about homotopy coherent diagrams specifically. Um, one of the examples is that the notion of homotopy colimit um, is defined in terms of homotopy coherent diagrams. Um, another one is that in, in the previous talk, we talked about this theorem of Lewis that um, if you, uh, that there's, there's no, um, there's, there's no category of spectra with the symmetric monoidal structure that, that makes the sphere spectrum a, 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 a symmetric monoidal unit. And the reason for this is that if you force the sphere spectrum to um, this, sorry, this, this, this symmetric monoidal structure forces the, um, forces the sphere spectrum to be a strictly commutative ring spectrum. Um, and this, uh, this is somehow too much to ask for. Um, so, uh, so we don't want, uh, spectra to have sort of a strictly commutative symmetric monoidal structure. Um, more like a coherent symmetric monoidal structure. I realize I'm being a bit confusing here because I did give some examples of model categories of spectra which have strict symmetric monoidal structures, but um, those those model categories somehow uh, uh, break something else. For example, that they um, they make the infinite loop space functor from spectra to spaces work less well, or something like that. Um, so, uh, but in particular, the the sphere spectrum and these these other things that we think of as um, as very commutative ring spectra are, are not strictly commutative ring spectra, they're ring spectra that are commutative up to um, very highly coherent homotopies. Uh, and yeah, so, so part of the point of introducing this formalism is that 
is that it should be it should be natural in homotopy theory to talk about um, these these very uh, coherent diagrams. Hope that made sense. Um, okay, so this the second approach uh, to the theory is the is the theory of quasi categories. Um, Which was developed by Joyal, and of course most of us know about know about it because uh, Jacob Lurie wrote approximately ten Bibles worth of material about it. Um, and uh, and from now on in this talk, I mean, so this is the approach that I'm going that I'm going to use uh, because I think it's very pretty, and um, and a lot of the the literature now uses uses this approach. Um, so when I say infinity category, I'm going to mean quasi category. Um, so the the idea of this approach is that um, if I have two two maps in some in some higher category, um, maybe instead of saying that they're uh, that these maps can be composed in a in a unique way, I should say that they can be composed um, in a unique way up to homotopy. So, so there should exist compositions of these maps, but maybe there's no good choice of composition. Um, instead, maybe, maybe the best I can say is that no matter which composition I choose, um, I can always find some homotopy connecting it to, to some other possible compositions. Okay, so this, is, so this sort of idea is less structured than a category. Um, it's it's saying that that you can compose, but not in a unique way. Um, but if we want to make uh, somehow how build the idea of homotopy coherent diagrams into our language, then then this turns out to be a pretty good idea. Um, so here's the definition. And uh, yeah, so I should I should say that I'm going to be using a little bit more simplicial technology in. Uh, today than I, than I have been before. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry if you haven't spent much time with this, uh, but I promise you it's really not all that bad. Um, so we have these simplicial sets uh, delta n, which are the n simplex. And inside delta n, we have a, a, uh, a simplicial subset, lambda n i, um, which is called a horn. And this is what we get by um, by removing the, the central n simplex and the n minus one face opposite the ith vertex. Okay, so for example, um, and these are defined for any, any i between zero and n. So if I start with the um, with the two simplex, so the vertices here are numbered, and um, I can form the the horn lambda one two by removing this this um, the two simplex of the two simplex and and also the the one simplex that's opposite the vertex numbered one. Okay, so this looks like this, and likewise, uh, this, for example, would be lambda zero two. Um, an inner horn is one of these horns where. Uh, I is strictly between zero and n. And so now the definition of quasi category is the following. Um, a quasi category henceforth infinity category
is a simplicial set uh, C. such that if I take an inner horn, mapping into C, then I can always extend it to delta n. Okay, so the slogan is that every inner horn has a filler. Um, this is similar to the definition of con complex. So a con complex says that every inner and outer horn has a filler. And so these are also called weak con complexes sometimes. Um, I was also looking at uh, Joel's notes on these earlier today, and he calls them quadigories, which I think is uh, pretty cool. Um, so let me let me give you a, a couple examples to show you how this this object deserves being called, uh, being deserves having the word category in its name at all. Um, Sorry, would you mind saying again what the difference between inner and outer horns are? Right, so inner horn is zero, is i is between zero and n. Outer horn is i equals zero or i equals n. So this this is an inner horn and this is an outer horn. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and hopefully hopefully it'll be clear in a second why like why why we're making this distinction. Um, so let me talk about how to. Uh, um, how to think of a, an infinity category is like a category. Uh, so first of all, if you have an infinity category, um, the objects of C are just the zero simplices. And the maps in C, the, the set of maps between X and Y, um, are supposed to be the one simplices from X to Y. Okay, so what about composition? Um, well, if I have, let's say three objects and I have a map from X to Y and a map from Y to Z, in other words, these are both one simplices. Well, this whole diagram is just a map from, um, from this horn, lambda one, two into C. And so by the definition, we can extend it to a map from delta two into C. And this means that we can fill it in. So there exists some, uh, some filler like this. And in particular, there exists another edge from X to Z. And so we'll call any delta two that extends the diagram uh, a composition of X and Z. Um, so this is a little more data than just another, than just a specific map from X to Z. It's a specific map from X to Z. And also this two simplex, which you sort of think of as a, a homotopy expressing this new map as the composition of the first two maps. Um, let me take this one step further. So, um, so let's say that I uh, that I do this in two different ways. So I still have my same three objects, my two maps. Maybe I should label my maps, um, and I have one composition C one and another composition. C2. Okay, well, really, we can think about this diagram as the inclusion. I didn't even draw the whole diagram, did I? So these, so that there are, there's a two simplex connecting C1 to F and G, and there's another two simplex um, in the back, uh, which is going to be impossible for me to draw, um, connecting uh, C2 to F and G. Okay, um, so we can think of this diagram as an inclusion from lambda one three into C. So specifically, um, let me redraw this this second arrow. Um, lambda one three is a sub is a sub complex of the three simplex, um, which has four vertices. So uh, so I'm I'm numbering. I'm numbering the vertices as follows. Uh, X is zero, Y is one, Z is two, and the second Z is three. Um, and I'm thinking of uh, this other composition C2 is going from the zero vertex to the three vertex. So now I have a face from uh, a two face from zero to one to two. 
a two phase from zero to one to three. And this, this equal sign represents a degenerate one simplex and there's a degenerate two, two simplex containing G in the equal sign. Um, so we have all the faces of the three simplex except for the face connecting zero, two, and three, uh, which means that we have a map of this shape. And now again, the infinity category axiom says that we can extend that to delta three. And this tells us that there's a two simplex, uh, which I'll draw in orange, uh, connecting C1 and C2. And we can think of that two simplex as a homotopy between C1 and C2 in some mapping space. So this expresses the idea that the, the composition of F and G is well-defined up to homotopy, okay? Um, let me give you some examples of this, of, of where you get infinity categories from. Um, there are sort of, so there are three major examples. First of all, um, if C is a one category, then we can take its nerve, which is a simplicial set. Um, and the nerve has the property that uh, every inner horn has a unique filler. And this comes from the fact that there, there are compositions in C that are, that are uniquely well-defined. Um, so this means that the nerve of C is an infinity category. Second, if I have a space X, I can regard it as a con complex. Um, Okay, there are two ways that we can do this. Uh, first of all, we can say, actually, this is exactly what I meant by spaces the whole time. Um, or we can, if X is a topological space, we can take its singular complex, and this is a, this is a con complex. And as I said, in a con complex, uh, every horn has a filler. So, uh, X is an infinity category. Um, these are special kinds of infinity categories. They're really, uh, they're really an, uh, sort of the natural generalization of a groupoid. Um, the reason that we should think of them as similar to groupoids is that if you, um, so the, the sort of morphisms here are, are one simplices in X or their paths in X and any path in a space can be reversed. Um, the third example, which is maybe the most interesting is uh, if X is a, um, a uh, topologically or simplicially enriched category Um, sorry, let me call this C. If C is a topologically or simplicially enriched category, we can form its, uh, uh, what's called its homotopy coherent nerve. And this is gonna be an infinity category. Um, Sorry, this is going to be an infinity category under certain conditions. So, uh, if X is if if C is a cofibrant, topologically enriched category, or fibrant, simplicially enriched category, then we're, we'll end up with an infinity category. Um, I'm not sure if I need this cofibrant, but but we do need this fibrant. So the idea for this is that uh, uh, 
um, like, like we form the nerve of, a, of an ordinary category, uh, the zero simplices of, of this nerve are going to be the objects of C. The one simplices are going to be the morphisms in C. Um, meaning the zero simplices in each mapping space of C. The zero simplices are points in, uh, in each space of maps from, from X to Y. Um, the two simplices are supposed to be diagrams of the following form. So a triangle of composable morphisms like this, um, but this triangle is not necessarily supposed to commute on the nose, it's just supposed to be a coherent triangle. So there's supposed to be a, a path in the space of maps from X to Z from G composed with F to H and so on. Okay, so this is a way of taking a, a, um, a topologically or simplicially enriched category and turning it into a, into a simplicial set. Um, and it turns out that under these fiber T conditions, you always get a, an infinity category by doing this. Um, uh, finally, let me mention one, one construction that can be done uh, on infinity categories. Uh, Oh, maybe before I say that, I mean, maybe this is this is obvious, but but I should I should point it out anyway. So that um, so so in particular, if we start with a um, a simplicial model category or a topological model category, we can take its subcategory of cofibrant fibrant objects. So um, starting from some uh, nice model category M. We can take the homotopy coherent nerve of this topological or simplicial category, and, and this gives us an infinity category. So we can think of model categories as presenting infinity categories like this. Um, all right, so the additional construction is, uh, is given a simplicial set K and an infinity category C. Uh, we define the infinity category of functors from K to C um, to be just the regular uh, simplicial set of maps from K to C. Okay, so this is this is defined in the completely standard way, where the n simplices of um, the n simplices of this. are the maps in simplicial sets from K cross delta N uh, into C. Okay, so if C is an infinity category, this is also an infinity category. So for example, um, functors from delta two into C uh, well, this is an infinity category, but the objects here are, um, are just maps of simplicial sets from delta two into C, uh, which as we said, we think about as, as, um, as giving us a pair of morphisms and some composition of them. So these are sort of homotopy coherent uh, triangles inside C. And likewise, if we take some more complicated simplicial set, um, like delta one cross delta one, then we can talk about homotopy co coherent squares inside of C. Um, and the point is that these are the objects of some larger structure, which is, a, which is an infinity category. Okay. Um, so, uh, let me um, tell you about the, the model structure that's associated with these. So this is called the Joyal model structure on simplicial sets. Um, 
there's a model structure. on simplicial sets. Uh, in which so the cofibrations are monomorphisms of simplicial sets. The fibrations, no, not the fibrations, the weak equivalences. Um, so a map of, of simplicial sets is a weak equivalence if for every infinity category C if I take these um, if I take these infinity categories of functors Um, and then I reduce them down to ordinary categories uh, by replacing each of the mapping spaces with the um, with the uh, with the pi zero of that mapping space. So I'm going to call these these the homotopy categories of these. So this is supposed to be an equivalence of one categories. Um, and then the fibrations are forced, but there is there is something interesting that we can say about the fibrations, which is that um, a map to so an object is fibrant uh, if and only if x is an infinity category. Um, moreover, this model structure is equivalent to Bergner's model structure on uh, simplicially enriched categories. So there's a, a equivalent equivalence. Um, between simplicially enriched categories with the Bergner model structure and simplicial sets with the Joyal model structure, where this right adjoint is given by the, the homotopy coherent nerve. OK. Um, so, uh, so if we believe that these, um, these, these categories are a good way of sort of thinking about higher categories, then we should also sort of think that these, these quasi-categories are as well. Uh, right. Um, and in particular, if we take some uh, simplicial model category, restrict to its subcategory of cofibrant objects, that gives us a, a simplicially enriched category, then we can apply, apply this left adjoint to get an infinity category out of it. So in particular, there's an infinity category of spaces. Um, there's an infinity category of infinity categories obtained by applying this procedure to the Joyal model structure, and so on and so on. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah, there is a running question in chat. Oh, I forgot to look at chat. Um, okay. Uh, have Have you guys resolved it, or should I should I try to look at this? I think that Olive and Jeff sort of addressed my my curiosities. It was about the <clears throat> how far away. A uh, simplicially enriched category is from a simplicial object in categories. Oh, um, yeah. As far as like the homotopy theory of such things is concerned, because it seems like y you would have a simplicial ob uh, simplicial set of objects, but quasi categories themselves have an underlying space of objects. So, um, yeah, maybe some of the difference gets. Is there on the point set level, but not on the homotopy theory? I was just curious. Right. So the the difference is that um, a simplicial. If if you forget about the homotopy theory level, then the difference is that a um, a simplicially enriched category is a simplicial objects in in categories where the maps are all um, identities on the on the on the. Uh, on the level of objects. So it's it's a simplicial object in categories where, where each category of simplices has the same object. Um, but I don't know like how that affects the homotopy theory. Jeff had a particular point set example and then Olive also had a characterization okay. that I found helpful. 
Okay, cool. So thank you both. Yeah, thank, thanks you all. Um, right, okay, so uh, let me, so let me see. So, so, um, so let me briefly say that there are a lot of notions of one category theory that, um, that sort of generalize in a very natural way to the infinity setting. Uh, so for example, um, an initial object in an infinity category is some zero simplex X with the property that um, for any ob object Y and C maps from X to Y uh, is, is contractible. Okay, so to make sense of this, we have to say a bit about how you actually define the mapping space between two objects, which we haven't really said, but, um, but it does, you can define it. Um, and uh, this, this should be compared with the one categorical definition where um, an initial object in a one category is an object which has a, a, uh, a unique map to any other object. Um, so here we, we sort of can't say unique map, but we can say something about the homotopy type of the space of maps. Um, we can use, we can likewise define final objects that's completely dual to this. Um, and we can use this to define co-limits. Um, so the co-limit of a, uh, if we have some diagram um, from some simplicial set into C, the, the co-limit of P is an initial object in an infinity category of uh, cones on P, okay? So let me point out in this, in this formalism, there's no way to talk about strictly commutative diagrams. So this, um, these sorts of diagrams should always be thought of as representing homotopy coherent diagrams of things like spaces. And this colimit should be thought of as analogous to, um, to the homotopy colimit. Uh, so for example, um, if I have some diagram of this shape in my category, uh, then, then a cone on P is going to look like a diagram of this shape. Um, Okay, so we so so there are these these two simplices um, making these compositions coherent, uh, and this is um, sort of the beginnings of how we we sort of defined homotopy co uh, homotopy colimits. Um, okay, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. You can talk about adjunctions. You can talk about con extensions. Um, Obviously, I don't have time to, to go into any of that, but, um, but one of the nice things about this formalism is that a lot of things that you already knew, you still, you still know. So a functor between presentable infinity categories that preserves co-limits is a, is a left adjoint, um, things like that. Okay, so now I wanna go to get to the point of all this, which is, uh, which is stable infinity categories. Sorry, maybe just to check on this last sure. diagram, is this literally giving you like the homotopy uh, push hat or something? Do you disregard what exactly. you have as an exactly. okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, right, so this the structure that the homotopy push out has it ha is it has maps from each of these objects and then homotopies uh, between the, um, like homotopies making these two triangles commute up to homotopy, if that makes sense, uh, which is, which is different than the sort of structure that a literal pushout has. Okay, so um, so the notion of stable infinity category, uh, I mean, this this is a very natural generalization of the notion of stable model category. 
Um, so we say that C is uh, stable if, first of all, uh, C is pointed. So what this means is that um, C has an initial and final object and their equivalent. So let's call this star. Um, second, C has finite limits and co-limits. And third, um, a, a square in C And remember that this is secretly a map from delta one cross delta one to C, so it has this extra structure as well. Is a push out square if and only if it's a pullback square. Um, if you know these first two properties, um, just like in our discussion of stable model categories, it, it really suffices to check that um, that uh, suspension and loops on C are uh, are inverse to each other. So, um, so equivalent to condition three, given the other two properties, uh, is that suspension and loops are inverse equivalences. Um, and I'm defining these in the way that you expect. So um, suspension is the homotopy push out of some, of some diagram mapping X to the zero object twice and so on. Okay, so, um, so this is related to these other notions that we've talked about before. Uh, if C is a stable simplicial model category, Maybe I should call it M. If M is a stable simplicial model category, then um, the homotopy coherent nerve of the uh, subcategory of cofibered fibering objects is a stable infinity category. Um, for the the pullbacks are pushouts thing. Do is that any given pullback square, or is the, are they? Uh, do they have to factor through the zero object? Yeah, this is a this is a bit stronger than what it says in um, in higher algebra, but I think it's uh, I think it's equivalent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, right. So. Uh, so what else can we do with this? Um, so. So the neat thing that we can do with this is there's there's a very nice way to um, to stabilize a, uh, a a not necessarily stable infinity category. Um, and so there's this discussion of higher algebra, which I don't actually know if I have time to talk about of this in terms of. Um, in terms of these things called excisive functors, but there's also a very quick and dirty way to do it. Um, and and what that is is if C is a is a pointed infinity category, um, so it's an infinity category, which means that it's an object in the infinity category of infinity categories, um, or it's a fibered object in the in the Joyal model structure. Um, and so we can draw some diagram involving C, and it makes sense to take the homotopy limit of that diagram. And so this is this is what's called the category of spectrum objects in C. Uh, sorry. So. Um, 
this is the infinity category of spectrum objects in C. And here I'm taking this uh, limit in the infinity category of infinity categories. So, so um, th the idea here is that uh, an object in this infinity category is supposed to be um, is supposed to be something that sort of looks like an omega spectrum. So I have some object x zero coming from this last copy of C, um, and since this is this is really a homotopy uh, limit, um, at most. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to have um, some equivalence from this to a loop space and some equivalence from that to a double loop space and so on and so on. Uh, so the objects sort of look like this. Um, in particular, uh, there's, a, there's a natural functor that goes from this category of spectrum objects to C itself. To this, to this last copy of C. Um, and this, uh, this is sort of an infinite loop space functor. Um, and under certain conditions, so if, if C is presentable, then this, this functor has a left adjoint. Okay, so um, so in particular, we can start with the infinity category of spaces, and this gives us a construction of the infinity category of spectra. Um, let me say a bit about why uh, why in practice this this idea is useful. I mean, these are all of these formalisms are sort of different formalisms for doing the same thing, um, but this this one in particular has been very useful in the following sort of setting. Uh, so. Um, So given a topological space uh, Z, there is an infinity category of sheaves of spaces on Z. So the idea here is that um, if I have some open cover of some open set uh, U, then the normal definition of a sheaf says that um, I'm supposed to be able to recover uh, the sections of my sheaf over U as the limit of some diagram um, given by evaluating F over the open cover and evaluating f over the intersections. Okay, so f of u is supposed to be the equalizer of these two maps. Um, well, in the if these are all spaces, um, instead of requiring this to be a limit diagram, uh, I should only require it to be a homotopy limit diagram. Um, and I should also think about the higher intersections. So there's really sort of this um, this uh, diagram that looks like this. And a sheaf of spaces is a, is a functor to spaces such that this, these diagrams are always homotopy limit diagrams. Um, So there are model categorical there are model categorical approaches to this too, but it's uh, um, it's it's somehow very easy to do it in the setting of infinity categories. Uh, more generally, so you can talk about sheaves of spaces over a space. You can also talk about sheaves of spaces over a site. Um, 
So a lot of things that you can do in algebraic geometry, for example, um, can, can be brought into the world of sheaves of spaces. And in particular, if we can define sheaves of spaces over Z, then we can apply this stabilization, this stabilization procedure I was just talking about and get uh, sheaves of spectra over Z. So this is just defined as spectrum objects in sheaves of spaces. Um, so a couple examples. Uh, Does it also make sense to talk about just sheaves of objects in a stable infinity category? Um, yeah, I think that's equivalent. Yeah, so you can find Yeah, this. I think they agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Peter May had to write like a, I don't know, however many pages of a book no one read yeah. in order to try and get that shit to work. So the thing, the thing about this, I like, the, the thing about this is that like J Jacob Lurie also wrote like, you know, how, however many pages, like it takes a lot of, um, a lot of work to, to sort of get everything going. Um, and the, I think the reason that the theory sort of works out so nice is because um, someone else has, has like put in a lot of the work already. Um, but this is... Uh, like it's really hard work. Um, and there may in fact be places where the infinity categorical stuff doesn't actually cover everything that one might want. Mm -hmm. But like, Mayan Sigurdsson is not like something you can read and learn from. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah, I not that I've uh, tried personally. Someone I was in grad school with, his PhD project was supposed to be on like figuring out some other way around some stuff. And mm -hmm. you just like you read some sentences over and over and you, you just start seeing blood. Yeah, so, so anyway, let me give you um, a couple specific examples of this. Uh, so um, one is that there are various uh, there are various sites of um, of smooth schemes over some base. There's a question in chat. Yeah. Let me see. Does sheaves from Z to spaces have a topology? So it, it's um, it's it's an infinity category. If that's if that's what you're asking. Um, yeah. Sorry. Is there is there more to that? Uh, is, I was just like wondering like what the structure is. It seems like a. I, I yeah because I, I thought you were taking like the homotopy like never mind yeah I don't know yeah I no 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 it's, it's okay these are this is a reasonable question I was I was confused about topology because it like means a couple different things in this context but sorry I, yeah I just been well because I always thought like homotopy limit like usually took homotopy limit spaces so I thought maybe there's like topology in that sense so, I don't know like what the open sets are you know I, I guess what I was trying to like understand if that makes sense yeah. Um, if it, I, I don't know if this helps, but but the older the the older way of constructing this is there's this there's this thing called the Jardine model structure I, on pre sheaves of spaces I think and these and the sheaves should be like the fibrin objects in that in that model structure I think I'm not I'm not super yeah. familiar with that um, yeah okay good yeah so so somehow this infinity category is like it's an example of an infinity category you get as a category of cofiber and fiber objects. Uh, right. Okay. So I should I should probably stop, but let me let me just finish what I was saying, which is that um, the if you start with uh, with the category of smooth schemes over some base scheme, um, and you give it certain topologies that work nice, um, then it's possible to use this to build uh, motivic uh, 
unstable homotopy theory and motivic stable homotopy theory. Um, so this is like somehow a basic part of the formalism for, for doing this stuff. Maybe worth mentioning that there is a result of Geffner and Spitzvik, which will likely never be published uh, from seven years ago, where they construct, they, they write down some basic uh, things you would want for uh, homotopy theory of schemes. And um, you try and do this infinity categorically and you end up getting the Viznavich topology. So like there are many choices of topologies you could put on smooth schemes, as you said, like the Zariski or the Ital topology and uh, somehow Niznevich is the correct one from a sort of first principles argument. But that's interesting. You'd have to talk to someone who took notes at the talk <laughs> because these are exactly two people who don't write things down. I was under the impression that so why aren't they well okay first of all i should i should stop the talk and everything so um th thanks everybody for coming I'll, I'll stop the recording and everything um